Hello. Welcome. Let us pray. Heavenly Father. Thank you for all the blessings in our lives. We are grateful for everything you have provided us. And for all the ways you have shown us your love and grace. Please continue to guide us. And open the eyes of our hearts to know you more deeply. Help us to understand your ways and your will. And to grow closer to you each day. Thank you for your constant presence in our lives. Amen. Today we look at our but God moments. Those are the moments in our lives when God steps in. And intervenes on our behalf. Those moments, where if God did not intervene. Things probably wouldn't have ended well. Those are the times when we confess. But for the grace of God, I don't know what would have happened. I didn't see any way out. But God, praise his mighty name, intervened at just the right time. We all have such testimonies. When we were just about to be thrown out of our homes. And an old friend shows up and saves our day. When your car spins out of control and is heading over the cliff. And the small stone stops it just in time. The Bible is full of such but God interventions. Joseph's brothers wanted to get rid of him. Because the patriarchs were jealous of Joseph. They sold him as a slave into Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him from all his troubles, Acts 7 9 to 10. David was totally exhausted from running away from an angry Saul. He experienced many but God moments during those times. We read of one such moment in 1 Samuel 23 14. And David remained in the strongholds in the wilderness. In the hill country of the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God did not give him into his hand. When do such but God moments occur? They come in moments of great difficulty. They come at times when we have run out of human options. But God moments are those moments that require the Lord to step in. It is in the midst of strong storms that God steps in. Whenever you tune into the news broadcast, you will most certainly hear the newscaster say, This is unprecedented, we have never seen or heard anything like this before. We are living in unprecedented times. These are really trying times. Many churches have been closed. The premises are being used as shopping centers, bars, and gambling centers. Meanwhile, mental health issues are on the rise. Depression, and anxiety disorders are rising. Suicide rates are increasing. Lawlessness is on the rise. Unemployment and financial pressures are crushing the souls of men. The Bible says that in the last days, people's hearts will fail them for fear of what they see coming upon the earth, Luke 21 26. We are not in those days yet, but we are inching closer to it. We see the birth pains and signs increasing in frequency. So what do we need? We need hope. We need eyes that are locked on our Lord. We need to dwell on the things which bring faith and hope. We need to focus on what God did for others in their trying times. Knowing that as the unchanging God, He will do the same for us. Even though all around us things are failing, and times are increasingly becoming difficult. Our hope and light may increase and shine all the more. Paul says in Romans 15:13, Now may the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we focus and meditate on God's promises. The Holy Spirit uses the promises to shed hope in our hearts. Let us take a look at Noah, and the days of the flood. The first but God moment comes in the face of a great storm and trial over the whole earth. Yet it is one where God, and God alone brings the righteous through. 
In Genesis 17:24 and Genesis 18:1 we read. And the waters prevailed upon the earth for 150 days. But God remembered Noah, and all the animals and livestock that were with him in the ark. And God sent a wind over the earth, and the waters began to subside. For forty days the rain from heaven smashed the boat. Then at the same time, the fountains of the great deep beneath the earth burst open, Genesis 7:11. So from both above and below, water was gushing out. Then for 150 days, the boat floated on the water. There was no land in sight. Being human, we might be saying to ourselves. There is no hope, this is the end for us. But then as believers, we remember that. God has promised to take care of us. The longer the water keeps rocking the boat, we might be get a little worried. Is God going to honor his word? Maybe, we should take matters into our own hands, and resolve this issue. We think and plot, and think again and plot again. Till we run out of ideas and options. Then we hear the most beautiful words ever said to a troubled soul. But God remembered Noah, and God sent a wind over the earth, and the waters began to subside. There were floods and devastation. But God remembered Noah. Rachel was getting desperate for a baby. In her desperation, she was prepared to kill herself. Then God remembered Rachel. He listened to her, and opened her womb. And she conceived and gave birth to a son. Genesis 30 22-23. We can talk about how God remembered Hannah. What is going on in your life? Do you feel like you are stuck and not making any headway? Does God seem so far away? The silence of God is for our own good. Rachel and Hannah had to wait. Because God was preparing a Joseph, and a Samuel for them. The storms will come. But let us remember that, God is right there with us. Job 37 9-12 says. God guides the storms. These may be natural and spiritual storms. He has a purpose for them, and they follow his command? Some storms are for correction, some for loving kindness. Some are to help us grow and mature. There are always blessings in the storms God sends our way. As the storms rage about us, we need to be quiet, for God speaks to us in the storm. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm, Job 46. God remembers. He remembers his promises. He remembers to deliver. He remembers his own. But he does so in his own time. In his own way. And for his own purpose. The problem is us. We are the ones who forget God. It is we who fail to remember what God has said. Or what he has done in the past. The psalmist says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Psalm 103 2. Let us pray. Heavenly Father. Power and might are in your hand. Who can withstand you? You rule over all the kingdoms of the earth. Whenever the enemy has come against us, you have always lifted up a standard against him. Father, today, the enemy has come up against us again. We are looking at yet another storm in our lives. We do not have the wisdom or the strength to fight him. That is why we are crying to you. Because we know you hear us, and will save us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. We remember the victories you have given us in life. While we were your enemies, trapped in Satan's kingdom. You came to die and set us free from his prison. We went to bed yesternight, and you kept us safe from the devourer. You woke us up this morning, so that we will be counted among the living. We thank you for the victory you will give us today over this storm. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.